McDonald's is going to have to pay probably a good chunk of money. So McDonald's found liable after girl, four years old, suffered second degree burns from hot chicken McNugget. So McDonald's and a franchise holder are at fault after a hot chicken McNugget from a Happy Meal fell on a little girl's leg and caused second degree burns. A jury in South Florida found in a case reminiscent of the famous hot coffee lawsuit of the 1990s. A second jury will determine how much McDonald's USA and its franchise owner, Upchurch Foods, will pay the child and her mother, the South Florida Sun Sentinel reported. Which, by the way, I feel like this is honestly basically retarded. It's just like, this is a situation where a company should not be sued for the failure of the parent. Like, they were given the food, right? The parent was given the food, and now the company is liable for what happened to the food and what that food did to the kid of the parent that received the food. Like, I don't know, that just seems so crazy to me. Thursday decision was split, with jurors finding the franchise holder liable for negligence and failure to warn customers about the risk of hot food. You ordered hot food. (laughs) It should just basically be like, oh yeah, by the way, this is going to be hot. Now, I understand, like, this might have been extremely hot if it actually caused, like, second degree burns, but at the same time, The parent received the food, so the parent gave that food to the kid, but now the franchise owner and the main company are now liable for that. It's it's kind of weird. It's like, for example, let's say that you had a bubblegum company. You sold a bubblegum to a parent. That parent then gave that piece of bubble gum to their kid, and that kid choked and died from chewing on that bubble gum, right? So now you're liable for the kid dying from chewing on the bubble gum that the parent gave the kid? Like, that doesn't make sense to me at all. So let's see. So. And McDonald's USA liable for failing to provide instructions for safe handling of the food. McDonald's USA was not found to be negligent, and the jury dismissed the argument that the product was defective. Our sympathies go out to this family for what occurred in this unfortunate incident, as we hold customer safety as one of our highest priorities. McDonald's owner-operator Brent Upchurch said in a statement, We are deeply disappointed with today's verdict because the facts show that our restaurant in Tem... To Marak, Florida, did indeed follow those protocols when cooking and serving this Happy Meal. Jurors heard two days of testimony and arguments about the 2019 episode that left the four-year-old girl with a burned upper thigh. Like, I don't know, I just think this is, like, absurd. And they blurred out the burn, I guess? So, Filiana Holmes testified that she bought Happy Meals for her son and then four-year-old daughter at a drive-thru window at McDonald's in Tamarack near Fort Lauderdale, the Sun Sentinel reported. She handed the food to her children, who were in the back seat. After she drove, drove away, her daughter started screaming. The mother testified she didn't know what was wrong until she pulled over to help the girl. Olivia Caraballa, who is now seven, the newspaper reported she saw the burn on the girl's leg and took photos on her iPhone, which included audio clips of the child's screams. The sound of the girl's screams were played in court, and the child, who is autistic, did not testify the newspaper reported. Lawyers from McDonald's noted that the food had to be hot to avoid salmonella poisoning, and that the nuggets were not meant to be pressed between a seat belt and human flesh for more than two minutes. Wait. Why would the nuggets be pressed between a seatbelt and human flesh to begin with, period? That just seems weird. But also, you're eating it, right? So, maybe it was too hot for consumption, right? Like, maybe it just like got right done cooking, and then they just served it, 
right? And maybe that might have been a bit too hot to actually ingest. Okay. But the problem is, since these, like, photos are blurry, I can't tell just how bad the burns actually were. Still, hmm. The girls' parents sued, saying that McDonald's and the franchise owner failed to adequately train employees, failed to warn customers about the dangerous temperature of the food, and for cooking the food to a much higher temperature than necessary. While both sides agreed the nugget caused the burns, the family's lawyers argued the temperature was above 200 degrees, while the defense said it was no more than 160 degrees. The case is likely to stoke memories of the McDonald's coffee lawsuit of the 1990s, which became an urban legend of sorts about seemingly frivolous lawsuits, even though a jury and judge had found it anything but. A New Mexico jury awarded Stella Liebick, 81, 2.7 million in punitive damages after she was scalded in 1992 by hot coffee from McDonald's that spilled onto her lap, burning her legs, groin, and buttocks. As she tried to steady the cup with her legs while prying the lid off to add cream outside a drive through She suffered third-degree burns and spent more than a week in the hospital. She had initially asked McDonald's for 20 grand to cover hospital expenses, but the company went to trial. A judge later reduced the $2.7 million award to $480,000, which he said was appropriate for the willful, wanton, reckless, and callous behavior by McDonald's. So here's the thing. I doubt that the family is going to get, like, millions of dollars. If anything, after everything's said and done, after what they actually end up clearing into their bank account, I'm guessing probably anywhere from the range of, like, $50,000 all the way up to, like, $400,000. The problem with this is that they both agreed that the nugget did actually cause the second-degree burn, right? So they actually agreed that it caused the burns. The only thing is, is like, one, why was that nugget that hot? Two, hopefully, which, you know, it probably is the case, McDonald's and the franchise owner probably have very good insurance, so they probably would be able to cover it. But still, at the same time, I just see... I think it's very odd to see something like this where you have a situation where a parent who had the food in her hand gave it to her kid and didn't think that it was too hot. Because if it was so hot that it could actually cause the burn, wouldn't the parent feel the heat from the bag or the container that they actually held in their hand, right? Because you had to pass it to your kid in the back. So you had to have felt the heat. So if you felt something that was super hot, why would you give that to your little kid? That's something that I don't really understand. It's like you basically put your own kid in a bad situation. That being said, if it was really too hot, then that's definitely like... The thing is, I definitely think McDonald's probably will end up having to pay. Like, well, I mean, they're going to have to pay no matter what, but like... They're definitely at fault, but to what degree, right? Because the parent still gave that chicken nugget to their own kid. Let's see some of these comments. It seems odd that the mom would leave the kid screaming for a solid two plus minutes before checking on her and then make sure to film it when she did. Yeah, that is a little bit weird, but this is also a weird thing too. Because, one, they didn't have the kid testify about what actually went on. And also, why would you be just constantly having chicken nuggets pressed to your skin for an extended period of time? Like, that also doesn't really make sense. So this person says, not odd at all. Mom saw an instant payday immediately at the expense of her autistic child. Figured she'd be set for life. That's why she left her child screaming and pulled out the camera. Besides, what kind of mother just tosses a bag of food to a compromised little one without checking it first? Certainly not a good mother. Well, I wouldn't really know, but I wouldn't really be able to make a statement whether or not she's a good mother or not. But it seems odd 
to toss an extremely hot bag of food to your kid who happens to be autistic. That seems very odd. And then also spending a good amount of time filming, taking photos of your screaming kid instead of just immediately trying to help your kid. That seems really odd. She suffered third degree burns and spent more than a week in the hospital. I mean, the thing says second degree. She had initially asked McDonald's for 20 grand. To, bah, 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 bah. Oh, they're talking about the coffee thing. I'll issue a friendly warning now to the mother. Don't let a four-year-old and an autistic child eat unattended, especially in the backseat of a car. Does the child not eat hot food at home? Sorry, Mom, this is all on you. I won't go into asking why you're giving them to-go food from McDonald's. If the mother really gave scolding chicken nuggets to a four-year-old, then it is entirely her fault. What kind of mother just tosses food to an autistic four-year-old without even checking it first? The negligence is on the part of the parent. Yeah, a lot of people are basically just saying like this is like an instant payday. And I understand that viewpoint because the thing is, she is like the mother is going to get a payout. To what degree, to what size, I don't know, but they're definitely going to get a payout. The only problem is, I have a feeling that when they do end up getting this payout, it's going to be completely wasted. Just all of it gone in probably like a couple years, which is a sad thing. So, that's the problem with like when people end up getting these types of lawsuits, these types of uh, really big payouts. They just blow it. <laughs> 